Production funding for Flying Squirrels Insider is made possible in part by the all-new 2015 GMC Yukon, offering professional-grade design and functionality. The all-new 2015 GMC Yukon, now available at Richmond Area GMC dealers. Dan Doherty at Colonial First Mortgage, assisting customers with home purchasing and mortgage refinancing, online at colonial1mtg.com and by phone at 804-218-4444. And James Limousine, driven to serve Richmond for 22 years. JamesLimousine.com, 804-273-1540. On this week's episode of Flying Squirrels Insider, Jay and Michael let you know how the squirrels are filling in for Angel Villalona. You live your fantasy at the Diamond. And John gets a mid-season report on the giant system from his top pitching and hitting instructors, Steve Decker and Burt Bradley. That's all ahead on Flying Squirrels Insider. And hello again, welcome into Flying Squirrels Insider. I'm your host this week, Jay Burnham, filling in for the legendary John Laser, who's on the road with the team in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Also this week, we're playing a man down. We're without Sports Radio 910's Wes McElroy, who's been out of the country. So here at the Colonial First Mortgage Desk, we're gonna go in deep into our bullpen to talk about the Flying Squirrels bullpen. Our Sandlot SAS correspondent, Michael Feldstein, will join me here in just a moment. How However, we do have later on on the show our luxury guest of the week, our James Limousine luxury coaches of the week, Steve Decker and Burt Bradley, the hitting and pitching coordinators for the Flying Squirrels and the San Francisco Giants, will stop by in a bit. I'd like to remind you throughout the broadcast, you can text FSI to 44544 to be hooked up with some Flying Squirrels swag. Also, big thanks to the Richmond area Buick GMC dealers for providing this gorgeous GMC terrain here on the set. All right, with all that said, we'll bring in Michael Feldstein, our Sandlot SAS correspondent and friend to the show. And uh, Michael, this team for the Flying Squirrels, they had a seven game winning streak snapped last week. They had a little bit of trouble with the Bowie Bay Sox, but overall, this team has continued to be one of the better teams in the Western Division and in the Eastern League, in your opinion. Recently, what's made them so successful? Well, I think without question, it has to be the bullpen. It's really been a spoil of riches for Rush Moorman and this ball team, and they've been so good when you look at Cody Hall, how he stepped up in the absence of Derek Law and Stephen Oker, who's been a new addition, Hunter Strickland. These guys have really done an admirable job filling in. And we thought there might be a little bit of difficulty trying to fill in for Derek Law. And in case you missed it, this past week the news came out that Derek Law will have to undergo Tommy John surgery. So he'll be out for over a year, unfortunately for him, and we wish him the best. But the Squirrels have also been able to, to come back and fill that void. As you mentioned, Cody Hall stepping into that ninth inning role and not missing a beat. What's made him so, uh, so successful as of late? Well, I think it is. It's his trust in his secondary stuff and perhaps no pitch emphasizes that more than the curveball. Go back to that series in Erie last week. Stephen Moya, one of the premier power hitters in the Eastern League, 3-2 count, game on the line. He throws that hammer down for a cold strike and gets him at a big spot. And that's really what separated him this year from last year is the maturation and the trust in the secondary stuff. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and for the squirrels, you mentioned Stephen Okert as well. The left-hander recently called up from San Jose. He's a little bit funky in his delivery, has a fastball into the low 90s, able to utilize a breaking ball. So when you have four or five reliable arms out of the bullpen, you have starting pitching that's starting to go a little bit deeper. When you get into these games like the squirrels had last night in Harrisburg, a 12-inning affair, it's a war of attrition. And just you have more bullets in the chamber than a lot of these other teams in the Eastern League. 
I don't think there's a team in the Eastern League that has as many quality relief arms as the Flying Squirrels. Some teams struggle just to have one guy who they can depend on to close out the game. The Squirrels have three or four guys who could possibly close out games for them. And what's been most impressive as to why they've had success is they're 38 and one when leading after seven and 40 and one when leading after eight. So once they can, once the starters can hand the keys to the bullpen in the sixth or seventh inning, it's pretty much going to be a squirrel's win. And yeah, those are some good numbers. My man Michael Feldstein <laughs> always brings the good statistics on our radio broadcast as well. Now for the bullpen, they can't be successful unless the starting pitching goes deep. Otherwise, you have to overuse guys at times. And the squirrel starting pitching is really starting to mature into what we thought they would be at the beginning of the season. Jack Snodgrass throwing a nine inning complete game shutout, then an eight inning affair to getting more innings out of those pitchers along with Kyle Crick and also out of the back end of the rotation. Guys, you might not have necessarily known a lot about going into the season or expected in terms of left-hander Kelvin Marte and Austin Fleet. With so many heralded young prospects coming into the organization, maybe the most talent we've seen ever really for the Flying Squirrels, Marte and Fleet now being able to go six and seven innings consistently their last two or three outings, it's been a huge benefit to them, especially with this six-man rotation, putting a lot of strain on the bullpen this year, we saw Edwin Quijarte, Phil McCormick, and even Jose Casilla having to go two or three innings multiple times. And because these guys are starting to go six or seven innings now, putting a little less strain on their arms. Let's move on to the offense now. The, the Squirrels pitching certainly has been uh, top of the Eastern League, and the, the offense at times has been there as well. Richmond starting, you actually mentioned something the other day. You're starting to feel the effects of losing Angel Villalona, one of your big production bats in the order. He's been out with a shoulder injury. How are the Squirrels going to be able to overcome his, his loss for the foreseeable future? I think this offense starts and ends with what the top three hitters do. You look at Tyler Graham, Kelby Tomlinson, and Matt Duffy. It seems as where those couple guys go, so do the Flying Squirrels. And with Liso not having that protection behind him in Violona anymore, I think it's exposed him to maybe become more aggressive out of the strike zone. So it's put more of an emphasis on Tyler Graham to get on base, Kelby Tomlinson to get on base, and then for the havoc to start on the base paths. You mentioned Matt Duffy, and that's a great point for, for the Squirrels and for really for everybody in the league. He's been a, just such a huge boost to this lineup. I think a lot of people in San Francisco have started to sniff around on Matt Duffy. We've talked about him on the show ad nauseum uh, over the course of the, the first two and a half months of the season. So uh, he continues to just produce for the Squirrels no matter who's hitting ahead or behind him. And you wouldn't expect a guy in your lineup who bats second or third most of the time to lead your team in RBIs, but when you get guy, table setters like Duffy and Tomlin and ahead of you, it's no wonder Duffy has had so much success. It's also the fact that he hits better when there's guys on base. One of the things that we talked about uh, before kind of going on air today is the squirrels playing so well away from the diamond. It's very hard to win at the minor league level on the road. The travel schedule is just, it's abusive at times. <laughs> and this team has uh, thrived away from the diamond. They've also had success at home, but you see a lot of teams just try to play 500 on the road. Why have they been so successful away from Richmond? Because of their dynamic offense, I think the Flying Squirrels have been able to take advantage of being the first team to bat with Graham, Tomlinson, and Duffy. When you look at it, 33 and 8 this year when they score first, 19 and 5 on the road when they score first. So getting the, the ability to just start it, get it going, and then kind of settle in has been a key for them. Yeah, that goes back to that series at the end of May in Bowie. Richmond able to get on base and on board first in all three games. They went on for the sweep because they were in control from the start. I want to put you on the spot here a little bit. We've talked about uh, guys who have succeeded at the double A level. A lot of times you see teams break up their uh, their roster at this point and promote guys to triple A. Now we knew going into this season we were going to see a lot of the key pieces here in Richmond for the entirety of 142 games. But if you could promote one player to triple A, who would it be? Well, right, right now, I think from an offensive standpoint, it could be Matt Duffy because he has consistently been your best hitter all season long, batting around 340 now for over a month. If you're looking at the bullpen, I think Derek Law would have been that guy. Cody Hall with 14 point and a third consecutive scoreless innings with the Giants bullpen problems at their major league level. He could be a guy that gets the fast track. One of the things we didn't really talk about when we dove into the pitching was the squirrels might get fully healthy into the return of Clayton Blackburn by the time this airs over the uh, July 4th weekend. Blackburn could be back in the rotation for the squirrels and that makes him just that much more potent. You're going to have a decision to make because you're going with that six man rotation. 
with Austin Fleet, who stepped in in the place of Blackburn. And when he comes back, it makes you a better team, of course, but it also gives you a decision to make as the who goes back into the bullpen. Yeah, and I think that decision is going to be, does someone get promoted actually up to AAA? Because you're going to have Marte and Fleet. It becomes a matter of who becomes the new long man back in the rotation, in the bullpen. Finally for you, prognosticate, does this team make the playoffs? If they stay intact as they do right now with the bullpen the way it is, I'm going to say absolutely. Of yeah. course, July 31st could change all that, but the way they're constructed today, I will say definitely. July 31st being the Major League Baseball trade deadline. We shall see. Will the Squirrels lose a player to benefit the team at the Major League level? Speaking of Major Leagues, we're going to be joined by the hitting instructor for the San Francisco organization. It is Steve Decker. He stops by as he joins us next here on Flying Squirrels Insider. He's Jared Parker, the most interesting ball player in Virginia. Whenever he plays, there are twice as many scouts in the stands. Half of them are baseball scouts, and the other half from the male modeling industry, convinced they have discovered the next Derek Zoolander. After the Squirrels handed out the 2013 team picture, there was a group of fans that were tremendously upset. Their gripe? The 24 other players had photobombed Jared Parker. Not all Squirrels come from Virginia. This one does. Stay squirrely, my friends. We've got a special midseason report this year as we're going to be joined by both the top hitting and pitching instructors in the San Francisco Giants organization. And we start on the offensive side with our old friend making his second appearance here, Steve Decker, coordinator of minor league instruction now, Deck, and also hitting. Welcome and thanks for the time as always. All happy to be here, Laser. This offense has been very pleasantly surprising and leading that attack, Matt Duffy. How pleased is the organization with the season he's compiled to this point? Well, it's no surprise how well he's doing. Uh, he He's led our organization in fastball barrel accuracy the last couple of years. He has a good solid approach. He stays in the zone a long period of time. Now, did we think that he would hit 340 at this point of the season? No. Uh, a good season here. You know, the average hitter hits 265 here at the stadium, and, and uh, the league can be tough at times with pitching. But uh, overall, we're pleasantly surprised. You know, the main thing is are, are players getting better, whether or not they start off slow, whether they start off hot. And what is his profiled game? You know, what is he trying to do as a hitter? Can he move a guy over? Can he bunt? Can he hit a ground ball with the, the infield back and runners at third base? So other than batting average, there's a lot of intangibles also that Matt does very well. And uh, I, I think his number one strength as is, is a player is his overall attitude to compete and succeed. And uh, you, you talk about a guy that has no fear, gets in the box, and, you know, he's not a physical specimen like a Devin Harris or a Jared Parker, but I tell you what, when he gets in there, to his attitude's like he's six foot five. You just mentioned Jared Parker, and Deck is adept at segueing me right where I wanted to go. There have again been stretches this season where Jarrett has looked like the best hitter in this league. Then there's been the frustrating stretches where it seems like he's getting himself out. You're, you're right. He's a very streaky guy. But, you know, the intriguing part about Jarrett is, is that he's a five-tool guy. He can run. He can throw. He can do all the things, hit, hit with power. Uh, catches the ball well, can play any outfield position. So if we can ever find that consistency role of having him going into a, uh, um, you, you know, I, I don't know if he'll ever strike out in a season less than 100 times, but can he fix himself faster? And what tools or what drills or what me mental cues can he go to to fix himself quickly? And uh, that, that's the key. I mean, Tony Gwynn, you know, um, Hall of Fame guy that I always played against, I always used to tell people, I can hit the ball from foul line to foul line just like Tony Gwynn. He would fix himself in a matter of pitches where it might take me a matter of weeks. So, uh, you know, and, and with Jared, it, it's, it's finding that consistency emotionally and physically that gets him on track quicker. Deck was mentioning the rigors of the schedule, and those are very real in the time put in. And then there are times when it all pays off, Deck. And I'd imagine for you and your compadres, this has been one of those weeks. You graduate not one, but two hitters to the big leagues. Joe Panic, Adam Duvall, two fan favorites here. How gratifying is that feeling, and does it ever get old? No, it never gets old, and it's very gratifying um, because they're both good guys. And, and, and you know, this is a professional business, and, and whether, um, you know, a good guy is a bad guy, you know, he, he's a, uh, a come from a good environment, come from a poor environment, it doesn't matter. This is professional baseball, and we have to supply players to the major league level to help them bottom line win ball games. 
And if they can come down here and, and get a guy and call him up and, and help in a way, whether it be as a role player, whether it be as a starter, power, speed, defense, uh, you know we're doing our jobs. Um, you know, when you see guys like Adam Duvall and Joe Panic develop as players from A ball all the way through, and you see their tools shine, and then they get that opportunity, I really, I always call our players before they go to the big leagues, congratulate them, and uh, just basically tell them to be themselves. You know, you know, you got to the big leagues for a reason. You're doing something right. Make sure you maintain that. Don't be distracted, and uh, go out and have fun. And those are two guys that, you know, first thing I get up, I, I look at the, you know, the box score, uh, obviously being East Coast, sometimes I, I'm in bed by the time that game ends. But you hope and wish those guys the best that they can somehow help the San Francisco Giants win. Well, we know you and the developmental staff are helping the San Francisco Giants win. Joe Panic, Adam Duvall graduating. And thank you, Deck, for helping us out again once again on Flying Squirrels Insider. We really do appreciate it. Always great to see you. Happy to be here. Steve Decker as we talk hitting with the minor league coordinator of instruction and also hitting for the San Francisco Giants. However, pitching is ruled the day headline-wise, and we'd be remiss on this midseason edition of Flying Squirrels Insider if we didn't also bring in the coordinator of minor league pitching, Burt Bradley. That follows Sandlot Sass as FSI continues. We're here on Sandlot Sass. I'm Michael Felstein for Flying Squirrels Insider, where today at the Diamond, the SunTrust Fantasy Camp took place, where members of SunTrust learned some pointers and tips from Flying Squirrel players and also hitting coach Ken Joyce. We'll take a look at some of those drills and even some action from the game. the musical background to today's game here at the SunTrust Fantasy Camp, William Carter. What did you think of the whole experience and how would you rate your singing today? Well, the experience was awesome. The singing needed help, so. <laughs> but I had a wonderful time. Um, it exceeded my expectations. I would encourage anybody, if they have the opportunity to attend fantasy camp at the um, Flying Squirrels baseball field. I have to say, watching you in batting practice, I think you had some of the most impressive power display. Did you have any prior baseball experience before this fantasy camp? All my life, man. All my life. I've been around the game for 35 years. You know, today is my 35th birthday, and it's pretty fun to come out and do that and enjoy the, enjoy, uh, the game of baseball on a day like this with all these guys. So it was great. So, yeah, I had a lot of experience with the game of baseball, not on this level of, uh, of, of detail and experience that these guys do. These guys do a fantastic job. You got to love the game to do what they do. So it's, it's a pleasure. I feel honored. And then just finally, uh, there's a lot of respect for your power prowess during the actual game. Describe that extreme shift and how you tried to approach it. Well, I mean, you, you got to hit through the shift. You can't hit around the shift. You got to hit through the shift. So what I tried to do is I tried to hit the ball as hard as I can, as low as I can, but I got up under. Okay, we're here at the post game from the SunTrust Fantasy Camp. Tyler Latore, whose squad was victorious over Ryan Lawless. Guys, what did you think of the whole camp today, and then what did you think of your team's performances throughout? It was a great camp. Um, guys were really enthusiastic about learning and and surprised themselves, I think, um, with how well they played and how well everything, they kind of soaked it up like a sponge and, and it showed in the game, it was really fun. You know, I think it was a victory for everybody, all said and done, you know, they learned a lot, you know, and uh, we had a lot of fun. And uh, Tyler, you know, does winning grant you any privileges in the clubhouse? I already have all the privileges in the clubhouse, so just, winning's just icing on the cake. 
What about what happens to Lawless for losing? Uh, he'll get he'll get his later today. I already got uh, doused with water, so he'll get his, and he's uh, he's already got the the field maintenance guys all give him the stink eye. All right, so Tyler Torrey, Ryan Lawless, the managers today at the SunTrust Fantasy Camp. Thank you, guys. FSI continues on location this week due to the Flying Squirrels travel schedule. We're at the Diamond, but our midseason report continues. We talked hitting with Steve Decker. Now we talk pitching with the coordinator of minor league pitching instruction for the Giants, Mr. Burt Bradley. And first of all, Burt, thanks for being here. It's a pleasure, Laser. Kyle Crick, he is the headliner of this group, whether for the right reasons or the wrong. And you were just here for his last start, and we saw 10 strikeouts. We saw that overpowering fastball, but we saw some of that inconsistency. Where do you start when you get back in the laboratory and get back to work with him? Well, with him, it's it's mostly about direction to the plate and uh, not trying to overthrow the ball. Um, you know, as in his last start, the one good thing I, I saw of it was he started to spin his curveball, which he hasn't had for two years since we gave him the slider back and uh, he threw some curveballs with good shape and and uh, that was one of the pluses for me. The other was when he had to throw a strike late in the game he could do that uh, and again it all comes down to the direction and, and, and throwing through the plate through the catcher's mitt. Uh, the walks I'm not real fond of. Um, he's walked way too many this year and early in the season when I was here he hadn't been past the second inning in a start and uh, he got kind of a uh, a stern talking to for a while and uh, was giving some ultimatums and and everything but uh, you know he's he's starting to take it to heart and uh, he's starting to work the right way and and uh, I expect him to finish strong the rest of the rest of the season. I got some stern talking to's when I was 21 as well. <laughs> I think most of them took and it seems like it's taken a bit for Kyle Crick but we transition to another 21 year old and we will be looking for a strong finish to the season although it will be an abbreviated one Clayton Blackburn when he gets back here what will you be hoping to see from him after unfortunately his season has been cut a bit short due to injury. Well I mean Clayton has been a little bit inconsistent when he was here uh, his breaking ball. Uh, both breaking balls weren't as consistent as they had been in the past, and uh, he wasn't using his fastball in the zone. He was starting to pick. Uh, you know, as often happens with a lot of young kids, they think they have to change something when they come to the next level. And and if you pitch to location and pitch to contact, usually good things happen. And Clayton's starting to do that. When he was throwing in Arizona just recently, um, we worked on tightening up his curveball, and he took that into the game the other day for two innings. and and uh, he's doing well. Right now we just need to get him up to five innings and bring him back. Save two left-handers for next, and that's Ty Block. He's been the most consistent in terms of the results. I know it's not always oriented that way. And also Jack Snodgrass. I think a lot of people don't recognize that Jack potentially here to be somewhat of that tutor for a guy like Ty Block. Have you been pleased with that relationship and how both results have somewhat mimicked each other to this point? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, Jack's got experience. He's been here. He's been through the wars here, and, and he's been successful here, and he's having another successful season now. Uh, Ty Block just needs to learn to, to get innings and learn to pitch and sequences like he's starting to do. And um, you know he's he has some trouble with mechanics sometimes, but uh, he's starting to learn how to figure those out quicker. Um, with him, when he walks one guy, he's ready to ready to hang himself at times because he, he's always had such good command. And, and uh, I think he's he's starting to get back in that in that mode of uh, locating his pitches better at this time. Well, we've got Burt Bradley. We break down this squirrel's pitching staff, our midseason report here on FSI, and a midseason promotion, Burt, just this last week for another young left-hander, and he makes his way here in young Stephen Okert. A lot of times when you look at guys, you look at the numbers, and you say, well, obviously he's worthy of promotion, but that might not be the case. What prompted this decision to bring him here now? Well, I mean, he, he was thrusted into the uh, closing role in San Jose, and uh, and even though they're struggling a bit defensively and scoring runs, um, what he did was pretty amazing. I mean, he, uh, he he pitched in tight situations every night, and he threw strikes. He went after guys. He threw three quality pitches, above average pitches at, at times. And uh, you know, it was there was nowhere for him to get better there. He need, we needed to test him here and. He came in the first night and in a tough situation and did the same job. And, and I expect him to be a, a great help to the back of the bullpen, which is doing well by itself as it is. But, um, you know, he's a guy that can pitch in the eighth, ninth inning at any time and, 
and be successful. Bert, thank you so much for helping us out with our midseason report, and glad to get to spend the next few weeks with you. Yeah, well, I'm, I enjoy being here, and uh, you know, especially with all the arms that we've got here to work with. And maybe I'll get you on the golf course at some point during that time, and uh, try and get some money back that you took from me last time. <laughs>